Hunger. Yes. So, uh, hello, I'm Felix. I'm a PhD student at the University of Angers. Uh, and today I'll talk about online Bayesian adaptive sampling for nonlinear models and its apply to plant phenotyping. So, first, I give you some geographical context. Uh, as you know, we are here in, La in Lyon. Uh, my laboratory is located in uh, the city of Angers. Angers is a key place for uh, horticulture and variety testing, uh, and it's the location of the French National Office for <coughs> Variety Testing called GVS. So we collaborate closely with GVS to evaluate germination of seed lots. So, so lot uh, seed germination is evaluated with, uh, with this setup. So a group of seeds uh, is placed on a wet blotter uh, and each seed will follow this germination process. So many times uh, where nothing happened, uh, this is inhibition and at, white at one time the radical appears and this is germination. This is this process uh, we want to, stu to study. So we take measurements every two hours uh, the light for the measurements, the lights, the lights turn on. Then uh, pictures are taken and the light turns off. Uh, uh, the com a computer counts the germinated seeds uh, with computer vision algorithm. And at the end of the experiment, when we stop it, uh, we get uh, such a signal. This is germination rate along uh, the time. So uh, from zero to uh, hundred percent uh, with the uh, <coughs> shape. So things to know about uh, the, the experiment: uh, it lasts 168 hours. That means that uh, 85, 85 uh, images are taken and processed. This is an energy-consuming measurement. Uh, the light disturbs the germination process and uh, storage requir requirements uh, are used, one terabyte per year, because we need to keep the experimental history. So that's why uh, there is a need to reduce the amount of uh, measurement, and it is uh, our aim in this study to reduce uh, this. So first, I give you uh, the signal <coughs> modeling. So we model uh, the germination rate as follows. So T is the time, uh, eta is uh, the noise following a normal distribu distribution with a standard devi deviation of sigma eta. And F is uh, our growth model, it's, uh, it's a Gompertz function, it's a, a reference in uh, this domain. So Gompertz function uh, look like this, uh, and uh, there is three parameters, A, B, and C. A defines the final uh, germination rate. B is linked to the global lot speed. <coughs> and C is related to the slope. That means also the, the lot homogeneity. So another uh, metric we are looking for is T50. Uh, it's a global speed metric. Uh, and uh, it's the time uh, need to reach 50% uh, of germination rate. So now I talk uh, about the data. We have almost uh, 400 experimental signals for Clover. It's acquired under three experimental conditions, low, high, uh, and normal temperature. So it slid to three uh, germination speed, slow, normal, and fast. The normal uh, signals are split into test and training. We call uh, the normal training set NTS. And uh, fast and slow data are kept uh, for test uh, in order to study bias. We, we have also simulated data. Uh, it's based on the model I present pre previously. And uh, the parameters are chosen uh, with, with estimation on the normal training set uh, data. So what, what we do to reduce the amount of measurement it's to perform an online adaptive sampling, and we monitor it by the uncertainty. Uh, it's the uh, measure, the unknown uh, germination rate 
uh, standard deviation, denotes uh, sigma wild field. Wild field. Wild field is the uh, unknown germination rate, as I say, and we have uh, previous knowledge. It's the uh, the previous measurement uh, y m and t m, the measurement and the corresponding uh, time. This is vector. So here is the algorithm for uh, online adaptive sampling. So every two hours, we will estimate the uh, the uncertainty. <coughs> Uh, if it's uh, higher than a threshold denotes sigma t, we will take a new measure. So if the uncertainty is too high, we take a measure. And this process uh, is uh, running until a time limit, a time limit denotes t max. So the key step in this uh, process is uh, uncertainty estimation. And we will uh, uh, compare three methods for it. Uh, Monte Carlo MC, Monte Carlo Markov chain MCMC, and Gaussian process GP. So first on, uh, on Monte Carlo, we will use the expected value of the uh, unknown measurement. Uh, we need the uh, the linked um, posterior distribution of this of this uh, this measure. So by applying Bayesian rules and Monte Carlo principle we make a pair, a sum, on uh, the parameters and uh, the sample uh, of the parameters are generated from the uh, normal training set. So we take all, uh, all our signal in, the, in this set and we estimate the parameters and this is our prior for this method. So other distribution in this, uh, in this formula are well-known uh, distribution normal PDF, uh, multivariate normal PDF, and the last one is a normalization constant. So at the end, we uh, compute the uncertainty by numerical integration. So now I move to uh, Monte Carlo Markov chain. So we also need to generate a sample of A, B, C, and also of the noise standard deviation. Uh, this, uh, this sample follows the joint posterior distribution and the generation is made by the metropolis acting random work. So our hypothesis in this, uh, in this method uh, are the independence of the parameters and our main prior is uh, that all the parameters follow uniform distribution. The bonds uh, of this distribution are found uh, on the normal training set. So, and uh, we compute uh, the, uh, the uncertainty at the end. So now the, the Gaussian process, we model uh, our function uh, as a Gaussian process. It uh, allows us to, to use prior on the space of nonlinear function instead on the parameters. So the hypothesis uh, are that it's for any set of time the, the evaluation of the function, the joint probability uh, for normal distribution. We also uh, suppose that uh, the expected value of the function is equal to zero, and, uh, at, uh, and we uh, estimate the noise variance on the normal training set. So to uh, constrain our, uh, model, our method by the model, uh, we need a covariance function that depends on the growth model, the Gompers function. And uh, we also need the kernel vector associated with T, uh, and uh, the uh, covariance matrix of the denoise measurement. So to evaluate uh, our methods, we focus on two aspects, distortion and bias. So we face a rate distortion trade-off. Trade -off. We define the compression rate as the length of the subsample signal divided by the length of the full sample one. And uh, as distortion, we use the mean square error between the full sample signal and the sum sample one. So what we expect uh, is that at a fixed compression rate, we get the lowest uh, MSE as possible. So the other matrix is bias. Uh, we use for it T50. So we compute T50 on the full sample signal and uh, on the sub sample one, and we make the difference. This is a T50 error, um, our bias. And if a T15 error, T15 
350 euro is uh, higher than zero, it's positive. That means that germination speed is estimated to be faster than it really is. So here uh, we plot uh, the distortion compression uh, curves for simulated and real data. Real data are uh, for the normal testing set. Uh, what we, we see first, we see a similar behavior between simulation and real. Uh, this uh, validates our modeling uh, for this experiment. So we see that the Gaussian process method give less, is very unstable and uh, the distortion rate uh, is high. So at the low distortion rate, so I mean uh, 0 0.2, uh, the Monte Carlo and Monte Carlo Markov chain give a uh, low uh, distortion. This is very is interesting. That means that we reach to uh, compress the signal from uh, 85 uh, sample to uh, 17 sample. Um, so this is um, a, good, uh, a good compression for us. So between 0 0.2 and 1 uh, of compression rate, the better performance and the better stability are for the Monte Carlo Markov chain. And under uh, 0 0.2 uh, compression rate, it's MC that produces uh, the lowest distortion. But uh, it's not free as we see later. Later uh, is now. Uh, so here I show you the bias uh, results. We, we see uh, the distortion, the log of the distortion, and uh, the uh, bias, the T15 error, uh, obtained on the real data at a 0 0.2 compression rate, and it's for uh, the different sets of data, normal, fast, and slow. So first, we see that the GP performed poorly on fast uh, signals. Uh, this is confirmed by the bias, we see that the signal estimation is uh, syst systematically slower than, uh, it's, uh, than the reality. Uh, this is a big default. Uh, MC uh, performs better on normal data than the other. So what we see on bias uh, is that the slow signals seem faster and the fast signals see are slower. Uh, so that means that there is a centering effect to the, to the normal uh, training set, uh, everything is seen uh, as a normal uh, signal. For MCMC, uh, we, we get the, the better stability. It's very stable across different groups compared to, to the other. The bias, uh, remains, the bias sorry, remains low. So as conclusion, uh, what I can say about method, uh, the method is that the uh, Gaussian process uh, is not performing. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, due to the hypothesis. Uh, we suppose that the expected value of the function uh, is e equal to zero. This is not adapted to our program. Uh, the Monte Carlo uh, give good uh, uh, performance, but it's biased by the, its training base. So, so it's uh, an illusion that uh, it makes good prediction. And the Monte Carlo uh, Markov chain is our best uh, candidate. The performance are high, and uh, we get a better stability across uh, the groups. So what we do in, do in this study is to use an adaptive sampling uh, on a practical problem online and for nonlinear uh, model. So we take advantage of our prior knowledge uh, on the parameters and uh, on the model and we reach to reduce the number of samples from 85 to uh, 17. So we want to take further direction. Uh, so the first is to have an adaptive Tmax, to have a full adaptive uh, method. Uh, the end of the experiments uh, have to be, uh, have not to be, to be monitored by a human. Uh, we want also to study the threshold compression rate relationship in order to monitor the uncertainty. And uh, we also want to, uh, to uh, test other methods than uh, Kalman uh, and uh, filtering or particle filtering. So thank you for, for your attention and feel free to ask questions.
and uh, we made it uh, for it so in a test uh, and we test if uh, it works or not and uh, apparently it doesn't work so so much with this non zero mean or with the zero with uh, the zero mean we don't try with the non zero mean okay and with this non zero mean you have computation issues uh, yes but with the, the modeling is a uh, is harder to, uh, to find the solution. Other questions? So uh, I would have one. You say that you have a threshold on the uncertainty that is called the sigma big T. And so that if uh, you go over this threshold, then you do a measurement. How do you choose this sigma big T? Is there some expert knowledge in this side, or is it empirical? Uh, so the idea is to, uh, to work with, with biologists to uh, know which, uh, which uncertainty they accept. Uh, but for instance, as I say, we have to study more the link between the threshold and the number of measurements in order to have a better monitoring of this and uh, be able to discuss uh, with this biologist to, uh, to uh, and, uh, give uh, him what is the result of this um, trade-off, compression or uh, uncertainty they have. And uh, would it be possible to have a threshold that is varying during this germination process, saying this stage is a uh, not very interesting, let's be uncertain on it, and this one is uh, relevant? Yes, yes. Um, so it will uh, add adaptation to the adaptation, but it's right that uh, the estimation uh, variance uh, is uh, decreasing when we uh, have more measurements, so we have to reduce this uh, threshold maybe along the time. But what we, we want to do is more to uh, maybe change our uh, threshold, uh, our uncertainty measurement, because uh, so it's maybe more interesting to have a, a global uh, thresholding, not to, uh, to monitor by the uh, instantary uh, uncertainty, but more on a, a global uh, uncertainty on uh, the signal. Thank you. Other questions? Yes? Yeah, I have a similar question about the first speaker about this uh, non-zero mean Gaussian processing. Can you explain the kind of difficulty you need to, uh, to use the non-zero mean? Um, so mm, I can't uh, exactly uh, remember the, 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 computer, the computational uh, problem, but it's uh, more uh, on the on the way, uh, so on the, the sorry, uh, the, on the paper, how will we uh, get the equation uh, at the end? So how will we get the, the last uh, formulas? So this one, uh, we don't uh, reach uh, to uh, get uh, the, the uncertainty formulas. Um, maybe we look at uh, this uh, yeah, more in detail. In future, okay. Thank you. Other questions? I would have a last a quick one. Could you comment a bit about the complexity and computational load on the three different methods? Uh, yes, so the, the fast uh, third method is, uh, is a Gaussian process because we don't have the sample generation. Uh, and uh, and um, mm, the MCMC is uh, maybe the, the, the higher computational cost, have the higher computational cost, but with the two uh, hours we have between each uh, estimation, uh, it's, a very, uh, it's not a constraint for us. Uh, um, also in the hypothesis where we made it on a, 
a small computer like Raspberry or so, so it's work fine. Okay, thank you very much.